Okay, welcome back. We are in late um, October 1852. We have passed term and let's have a look at the state of play. So we can see that the main Russian army in Sofia has sat tight for the for the most part. Uh, they've broken a force off. Um, it's pushed through Nish uh, and Zvornik and we can see that there's some pillaging uh, as they pass through these territories. They're increasingly relying on this obviously to offset their lack of supplies. It looks like the supplies in Sofia is diminishing somewhat faster than I had anticipated and they are besieging Sarajevo uh, with a breakaway force comprised of a corps, three divisions and a brigade and mounted partisans under the command of Lieutenant General um, Muriev cars. They have two lieutenant generals. Uh, in fact, they have one left, you know, two lieutenant generals, I beg your pardon. In fact, it's under the command of Dmitry Ostin Sakin, two lieutenant generals and one major general. But uh, they've kept the sort of um, the, the sort of main part of their force. They've kept, they've kept back in Sofia and they appear to be sitting tight. But I think I can see what their game is. And we'll talk about this a little bit as I pass turn. Um, but Sarajevo is also um, a strategic point. And, um, yeah, we'll revisit that topic. Um, that's pretty much it on the Western Front. Um, Omar Pasha was set to sit tight, to uh, receive replacements, and to uh, reorganize. Uh, he's forced to a degree. And one of the problems with replacements and reorganization is that they are a little bit mutually exclusive. Not completely, but as your forces uh, receive replacements... Um, this um, reduces the degree to which they are able to reorganize because fresh troops create a, a lack of a loss of cohesion and, and a bit of disorganization. Receiving replacements um, reduces the speed with which your forces kind of reorganize. Uh, so our force organization is um, only partially restored at this uh, stage. The independent cavalry division has rejoined Omar's force and has received some replacements, but is somewhat disorganized. Uh, we promoted. Adil Karim Nadir, um, but for the time being, we're going to keep him in the Western Theatre. We've given him command of the Imperial Guard. He is the more capable of our kind of um, junior officers, if you like, even though he now holds the same rank as Omar Pasha. He uh, has a lower seniority, um, so he uh, he will serve in an advisory capacity, but in command of the Imperial Guard. He's a sort of rather like a sort of very, very senior Lieutenant General uh, in terms of his role. Uh, his promotion has uh, created a new Lieutenant General, uh, which is Selim Pasha. He doesn't have any specific kind of uh, attributes or qualities, um, but he's a fairly solid kind of uh, Lieutenant General. Uh, we're sending him north. It's going to take him six days to hook up with Omar Pasha, and he will take command of the Independent Cavalry Division, which would mean that this army will have a full complement of staff command. There will be no independent large forces. There will only be independent support sort of um, brigades, if you like, regiments and brigades. Um, we are going to take a bit of risk. I think the days of kind of sitting tight and waiting for everything to be, everything to be perfect and, and this sort of thing are over. Um, so we're going to move um, Omar Pasha. His force is not completely reorganized. It's not in a perfect situation, but we're going to move him into uh, Sofia. We're going to have him set to an offensive posture, not assault, um, because there may be forces in, in, inside Sofia itself. We don't want to kind of uh, be too risky, but we want to def defeat anything in the field outside Sofia. We're going to um, have him set to attack at all costs. Now, Salim is set to hook up. What will happen automatically is if a force moves, Selim will adjust his course to hook up with Omar Pasha's army. So the likelihood is, uh, in fact, we could even make that a little bit more concrete, make that much more likely to happen. We could simply move his force so that it hooks up in there. It's still going to take six days, and it will take Omar uh, five days. That's good. Um, that's fine. I mean, we've got a British force sitting in Constanta. It's the Duke of Cambridge's uh, core, um, comprised of a division and a West African frontier force, which is maybe also a division. Um, uh, we also have an ad hoc British force sitting in Adrianople comprised of what looks like a uh, West Indian uh, regiment, Royal African Corps, Artillery Indian Service Corps. It's sort of a mixed kind of force. And um, a French force sitting in Kanakale. Uh, it's an army corps comprised of, well, a corps and, and uh, a few divisions. Um, yeah, I, th I think the days, of, as I say, of sitting tight, of waiting, you know, of trying to kind of outmaneuver. I mean, the Russians are isolated in the Balkans in the last analysis still. 
and they're kind of playing for national morale objectives. I think their intention is, is to kind of inflict as much pain as possible. If they take enough sort of uh, significant locations, then this would kind of create a political storm and might result in us kind of dropping out of the war. I think that's what they're playing for. Um, and they're playing a very risky game, but I guess they've calculated that getting this force out of the Balkans is going to be tricky. Uh, there's a chance they may even slip slip the net here and move south because their their next option really has to be to take another depot, I'm assuming. So yeah, heading south and taking Salonika might be an option for them. The other thing may be that they, be, they might be looking to get transit rights from Austria, um, or at least supply rights, so they can actually transition supply through Austria. That might be what is informing um, their move into, into sort of Bosnia Herzegovina. That's something that we need to consider. Um, but the plan is for Omar Pasha now to prosecute aggressive actions against the Russians in the Balkans. Uh, no more letting them sit tight for long periods of time. We can't just let them sort of sit there and hope they're going to run out of supplies. It, you know, they're, they're drawing on replacements from the local population, so their force is not withering away at this stage. Um, so, yeah, we have to take the fight to them. And that is what we're going to be doing. Um, in the east, um, the cavalry division at Sivas, then, which is under the command of Ivan Krasnov, has hurtled rapidly through um, uh, Malatia uh, and is in Ezerum, besieging Ezerum. There's no real risk to the fortress in, in the short term, at least anyway. It's only a cavalry division. He's sitting outside the fortress. We have a, a, a pretty substantial force of, what, nearly 30,000 men holding Ezerum. It's a partially constructed fortress, but this is a very limited force. Uh, so I think the prospect of uh, his force taking Ezerum are very small indeed. Now, Vorontsov um, has fallen back from Van. We had a Bashi Bazook force, uh, which has fallen back, but obviously we, we were beginning to get a bit of military control uh, in Van. Um, it looks like his supplies were beginning to dwindle. This was beginning to have an effect. We're interrupting supplies. This is the desired result. I mean, it's a very, very small force that we were using. I'm trying to think it's actually, it's uh, it took a bit of damage to the, um, the, the Bashi Bazooks. That's fine. You know, like they're very, very cheap kind of paramilitary forces. Um, they've done their job. They've disrupted supply to a major army, compelled that army to fall back. That's great. It's bought us some time. We've got some Bashi Bazooks in Hakari. Um, actually, I'm going to keep them in Hakari. I'm going to move the Bashi Bazooks from uh, Diabakir into Bitlis. It's going to take 12 days. We'll have that force set to retreat if engaged. Um, on the eastern front, the plan now is to get some forced concentration. Rita Pasha um, is activated. Um, he has the, the kind of newly sort of a minted army corps with two supply detachments. He's going to do the long march east through Trabzond um, into Batumi. It's going to take him 28 days. Hussein Avni um, is in command of an additional army corps. Um, that army corps, is, uh, its weight is 40, so we can actually bring into play uh, the uh, transport uh, force we're going to send that's going to take three days we'll set that to evade combat and uh, retreat if engaged it's going to take that transport fleet then or transport squadron three days and then um, in early November the plan is to embark Hussein Avni and, his, uh, and, and get him in, in Batumi and he probably arrive in Batumi before Rita Pasha does um, there is a small Russian force in Batumi it looks like a kind of Cossack brigade we have our own um, uh, cavalry brigade in Batumi. It looks like it's in possibly slightly better shape than the Cossacks. That's set to engage, um, sustained attack. In addition to that, in order to achieve the force concentration we're looking for, um, Abdi Pasha's uh, army corps with a cavalry division plus various kind of the various support components that would be required really for an effective army, plus. A supply detachment is going to begin moving north now um, into Batumi. It's going to take him four days. He's going to be accompanied by a Bashi Bazook force, which is going to take uh, those guys 12 days to get there. And the purpose of the Bashi Bazooks is just to back up the cavalry brigade and try and get some kind of military control over Batumi. We have to keep a bit of an eye on this force to the north. We've now got some better intelligence on it. It's uh, Nikolai um, Ev Evdomikov. Um, it looks like the force that he controls is relatively modest. It's two line brigades plus, I think, uh, Obeznia Polk. I think that is a supply detachment. I don't speak Russian. I may be wrong. Um, yeah, I think it's a supply detachment, but I don't necessarily. I may be wrong. 
that's pretty much it for the eastern front. Uh, we do have some Bashi Bazooks moving into um, Sivas, which is now being vacated. So this force will uh, regain control of Sivas and we'll keep uh, that force in Sivas for a period of time, which will restore military control to the region. And it looks like the kind of threat to the center is over. There's now no prospect of that cavalry. There was a chance that cavalry force might hurdle towards Ankara or head south towards um, Adana and then use these kind of um, depots as, as a way to kind of, um, yeah, be, get a bit creative in central Anatolia, which would have been very disruptive, you know, um, and that's no longer on the cards. <clears throat> that's it, that's our moves for eastern Anatolia. Uh, we've got a transport fleet heading to Sinop. The other smaller transport squadron is still being built, uh, you know, we'll, we'll leave that in, um, in Constantinople, that will eventually join the larger transport squadron, just to kind of pad it out a little bit, provide it with, I mean, we're only going to be using this force in, in, in coastal regions anyway, but that's fine because most of our transit is, is going to be in coastal regions. The real purpose of the transport fleet later on will be allow us to, will allow us to rapidly redeploy into the kind of Middle East if we have to redeploy a, you know, an army corps or something like that. In Aden, we set our kind of force to um, evade combat and to retreat if engaged. Uh, there have been no engagements, we've recovered some organization, but we've got a long way to go, and we're quickly working through those supplies because we no longer have an anchorage or anything like that. We're gonna give it another fortnight, hopefully that will provide us with enough kind of organization and recovery required to kind of engage uh, the Yemeni forces there and, and quickly begin to rebuild a harbor. Um, it's, we're in a dicey situation here. You know, The other option is to try and really escape north through um, the Hajjaz towards Palestine, that's a long march, it's like two, three months, we'll definitely run out of supplies I think <laughs> uh, whilst doing that and my worry is that military forces in Hajjaz might kind of irritate local tribes, it might initiate something that you know similar to what we already have going on in Yemen. Uh, now Hajjaz is a bit more consolidated than Yemen of course but we don't want to kind of reverse the gains that we've made there, it's a volatile region. So yeah, we're rolling the dice a little bit here, but I think that's that's just what we're going to have to do. Um, I think it's it's probably it's going to be more costly in some ways to actually abandon the province. Um, it's not cost effective to abandon the province essentially. I think it actually you know it's gonna, whatever happens, we're going to have to eat a cost here. And my thinking is, if we're going to recover this force, you know, we need to muscle on the ground to restore some measure of control at least over her diver. It's fine if they fall into Sana'a, besiege the fort there. We've got a kind of um, uh, militia brigade, plus, of course, the uh, colonial fort and the depot will generate um, a kind of generic force anyway, a sort of uh, which will which will kind of be mustered to defend the fort, uh, which will join um, this brigade. So that's the plan for Aden. Now we do have. I thought this cavalry force, had, uh, this infantry force had retreated. We'll try again. Okay, that's fine. We'll set to evade combat. Retreat if engaged. Yeah, so we have um, a cavalry brigade then in Amal. Uh, we've got pretty good reconnaissance on the Sanusi raiders. Um, we're going to set to kind of evade combat, retreat if engaged, and we're going to just try and keep this force in this area for a period of time. It's sustained some losses. Uh, we want this brigade to kind of recover some organization and be in a, a slightly better position to engage this force. It's slightly weaker. It's a pretty tough, uh, tough force of kind of insurgents to the south. And we have, you know, really scant kind of resources to deal with it. So if we can keep the kind of cavalry brigade in Amal for a period of time, um, yeah, reorganize it, get its cohesion, get some replacements and begin to kind of, uh, begin to kind of get some military control over the region and yeah uh, when we're in a better position we look to actually engage these Seleucid raiders the other thing we're going to do is to get the main imperial fleet uh, ready for a sortie in the black sea my intention of it was at some point to move the imperial fleet into the trade box but it's completely reorganized uh, we're set to a sustained attack and we're set to a naval interception and we're going to sortie uh, the reason being is because, like, you know, again, we're spotting some ships. It looks like the Russians might have some forces. I don't know where they're coming from or where they're going to, but they have some forces at sea. Um, these are just land forces that are using riverine transports. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, small cold. 
Yeah, but they've been spotted by our merchants anyway. Um, there's a chance they're going to begin, begin to kind of muster a force, possibly in Odessa or Bassarabia. Um, but anyway, it's an opportune moment, I think, to kind of sort you the Imperial fleet. It's in a position to kind of uh, make a move. So let's do that. First of all, we'll follow the same path as the transports to provide a bit of an escort. Then we'll head into the uh, East Black Sea. We'll head off into the Sea of, sea of Azor. Uh, Azor and, and there we go. And then we'll sit tight just off Odessa. We're not set to fleet bombardment, so we should be uh, safe from their coastal guns. And that... Those are our military plans for late October based on the Russian moves. The Russians haven't made any significant moves. The only thing they've done is to break force off from their main force in Sofia, and they're looking for a soft target, really, which is Sarajevo, uh, which isn't fortified. It does have a garrison, uh, actually. It has a kind of fortress garrison, even though there's no fortress there. Uh, we just haven't got around to building it. Um, yeah, the hope is that this force should be able to hold for a period of time, but it's not a fortress in the last analysis. We can't kind of, you know, we can't gamble on that. Uh, but the main thing is, I think if we can defeat this Russian force, maybe force them back into niche, retake Sofia, retake the depot and the fortress, um, that'll restore some of our kind of national morale. It'll show that we have, you know, we have to take some kind of measures to show that we kind of, uh, we're seriously kind of aggressively <laughs> pursuing the conduct of this war. Sivas will be ours again uh, by early November. And the, the, the other move really is that the Russians have, kind of moved east slightly they've moved their cavalry division towards Ezrum and they've moved their main command force their main field command into van and they've got just a raiding force of regular raiding forces in batumi but um given that this happens to be the area that we intend to organize force concentration i don't think there should be too much of a problem the only concern for this small force is this is a force that is suitable for deep penetrating raids so this force might pass through Ezrum into the um Malatia and into sort of Marash or something like that and begin to kind of conduct some kind of raiding operations um, in sort of eastern, eastern central sort of Anatolia, maybe northern Syria, northern Iraq. So, food for thought, we'll keep an eye on that. That's it. In terms of our military moves, that is it. Um, uh, just quickly looking at the economic administration, we're starting to see some of the first kind of economic disruption of the war. We can see now that, you know, we've lost the major city one of the largest cities that we uh, control actually in the Balkans um, in addition to that we're seeing evidence of armies sort of moving through pillaging regions because of a lack of supply and this kind of thing so it's causing some economic disruption there's a slight depression in terms of the uh, number of goods sold in the national market and that reflects a little bit in the kind of returns in private capital um, we've, we've, we've got pretty good access even though there's a bit of a bottleneck on manufactured goods it seems that paying a premium is paying off we are getting those imported and we're selling our exports sitting at 46 for 116 this term you know there's going to be a little bit of economic disruption in any case economic growth doesn't happen in a linear fashion it sort of happens kind of quantity into quality there are long periods of what feels like stagnation even though you're engaging in you know you're actually investing capital in, into things and uh, then all of a sudden you'll see kind of the results of those investments pay off in terms of our private capital we have there have been more pressures on private wealth because we're using private wealth to essentially import manufactured goods and then using the state to buy those manufactured goods from the capitalist for military kind of the sort of military exigence if you like so um, there's been a slight kind of uh, a slight depressing effect on private capital accumulation, but we are still accumulating private capital and we're reinvesting it. Um, just in the last few months, we're not engaging in any major kind of projects, but for example, we've begun the construction of an opium field in Bursa. Um, I think I mentioned a couple of terms ago, we've got a, um, a cattle farm in Taurus, and we're nearing the completion of an additional fishing port, which we began building in Sinop. Uh, so these are very kind of like inexpensive um, sort of enterprises, you know, they're mainly agricultural enterprises. The opium field will be one of the more lucrative ones. We do have a small trickle of opium um, in any case, although that's likely going to stop now, I suppose. Where did the opium come from? In um, Yeah, so it actually came from Hodaida. Uh, we had a small trickle of opium coming from Aden. That's now been closed off because our trading station would have been torched and destroyed along with the anchorage of the colonial fort. Uh, so we've kind of lost that sort of um, 
lost that toehold really. Um, but this opium uh, plantation is going to take what 255 days, and that will provide us with a consistent source of opium. And once we get a railroad, for example, hooking up for uh, I don't know, Izmir through Bursa going to Smyrna, that will increase uh, production of opium there as well and give it a nice kind of connection to a port for possible exports later on. Um, that's it. In terms of our military moves going from late October into early November, that is it. All eyes on you, Omar Pasha. This is it, five days' time taking the fight to the enemy. Who knows? Maybe the Russians are going to head towards Plevin and maybe they get there first. Um, Sofia is not flat, uh, you know, perfect ground for an offensive. Uh, the Russian force is possibly slightly larger, of a similar size of ours. It looks like its organization might be slightly better. Um, uh, it looks like its supplies are lower. Paskovich is not a great defensive commander, and he has a fairly hefty put command penalty, partly because his force is large, but it's comprised of lots of different kinds of units. He kind of padded his force out once, I think we destroyed a corps and a couple of divisions at one point, so the court, his sort of command is padded out with lots of little brigades, lots of small forces, and having lots of independent small forces in his command has you know, uh, increased the kind of command penalty strain. It's a it's a quite unwieldy force, um, so we're hoping that's going to pay dividends as well. Let's pass turn and um, see what happens. Let me just very quickly check. I'm a little bit kind of OCD with this stuff. Um, I'm to make sure that I haven't kind of missed anything in terms of my exports. That's nice. We've got five diamonds or five units of gems sitting in the, in the vault. We'll see some conversion into state revenue probably um, in the next turn with that. Yeah, that's good. Very quickly check reports, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, that is absolutely daft that I should have seen. That's fine. <clears throat> Okay, that's close enough for uh, government work. Let's pass turn. <clears throat> now, national morale. One thing that has occurred to me is that We've been fighting a sex, uh, you know, a successful prosecution of the war. I mean, uh, it's not. I wouldn't say that we're winning because the war is being fought on our territory in the Balkan Peninsula and in, you know, eastern Anatolia. It's not like we're invading Russia, but we've won all of the major kind of pitched battles so far, and we've destroyed, you know, huge swathes of the Russian army. But the Russian army is large, and it's one of those kinds of armies that can just, you know, um, is very durable. It can sustain heavy losses and continue to be a very effective force but one thing we've really overlooked is national morale which is if you like public perception of the war and it's not just some kind of like amorphous thing it's actually really important uh, for an effective prosecution of the war it's all very well kind of trapping Russian forces and on paper we're doing all the right kinds of things you know we're making sure that our forces you know our main army in, in Europe under Omar is in a really good shape uh, when it engages the Russians. Uh, the, you know uh, the conditions are most favourable that we can possibly, you know, we can possibly provide our Pasha to kind of deliver the results. <clears throat> but in doing that, it's really easy to forget something like Sofia. Like Sofia is a massive, you know, like uh, it, it's one of our, our, our biggest kind of cities, if you like, in the Balkan Peninsula. And when you know it's when a location like that falls to Russia, it doesn't really matter, you know, what the displacement of forces are, what the supply condition of the Russian forces. The public perception of the war is that that is an absolute, you know, calamity. It's a disaster. And when that's combined with something like a colonial fort falling in Aden, you know, despite the, you know, prior to this war beginning, we'd spent, you know, a year and a half pouring resources and men and equipment into sort of shoring up our position in Aden and kind of looking to exploit the region. And when that falls, simultaneously, in the same fortnight, you know, it begins to create a sort of public perception. It begins to hit your national morale. Now, the thing is, 
is that national morale, having a decent national morale, is also important for a successful prosecution of the war. Because um, if our national morale is like 80 and Russia's national morale is 110, um, that will notice in battles. Our army is a reflection of our society. So the lower the national morale, the lesser of an effective fighting force that we have. And that's irrespective of the, uh, the leaders that we have and this kind of thing. It means that an Ottoman army that engages a Russian army that has relative parity, if the morale of our force is low because our national morale is low, it then actually becomes harder for us to turn the tide. And that's something we really need to keep an eye on. And the Russians have been quite clever here. Uh, their national morale has been hit because of uh, loot having lost a number of kind of pitched battles, and they're sort of offsetting that um, by looking to press victory locations. And it's very easy for these things. I mean, like the the situation a month ago where we kind of lost what three or four national morale points in 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 a fortnight. That could have been worse, you know, if there had been like a mass rebellion which had spontaneously broken out in Libya, which resulted in the fall of Tripoli. Uh, or at the same time, something in Iraq, which results in, some, you know, and maybe only temporarily losing Baghdad, you could end up losing sort of 10 national morale points, you know, like uh, in one turn. It could be an absolute, it could have been even worse than that. So we have to be really sensitive to these kind of things. Managing public perception of the war um, and sometimes taking risks and being aggressive, I think, is actually a condition for a successful prosecution of the war. It cannot just be about sort of trying to isolate and defeat the Russian army in the field. We obviously do want to do that. But we have to ensure that we hold these locations. Uh, and that if the Russians hold them, it's only for a very kind of you know fleeting period of time. And that's something that only really occurred to me when sort of Sofia fell. And I mean the, the Russian I didn't actually mention this, but Russian national morale sits at 94. Ours is 93 percent. So it's um yeah for the first time in the war. I think at least since the very beginning of the war, uh, where Russia started started out with a fairly high national morale. You know, they have a, a small national morale lead over us. And, uh, yeah, this is important. It's something that we need to really, really consider, I think. Um, yeah, as we kind of enter into the sort of latter part of this year and we begin to consider our strategy, obviously throughout the winter, but also looking at what we're going to do in the spring next year. Uh, when, uh, you know, at the moment, the weather's not too bad, actually. I mean, we're in late October, but you wouldn't know it. There's no heavy rainfall anywhere. The weather's fairly kind of clement. That's Sarajevo who lost them. Damn. And that'll be a national morale point or two or three. They sent a force of 33,000. Yeah. They suffered very small losses. They took a number of prisoners. I mean, Sarajevo wasn't fortified. It was a kind of, you know, a garrison force of, what, 10,000 men. But... Mm. If there's one fortunate thing about Sarajevo is even though it is a sort of um, a strategic location, here we go. Okay, Plevna looks like they moved into Plevna. Okay, I mean it's a, again, a, a, it's, you know, it's a hands-down victory. Uh, we suffered what ten thousand casualties; they suffered twenty thousand, basically. Um, yeah, definite win. One round of one round of battle, very fleeting. That was on day five. Okay, another victory. We took 11,000 prisoners, inflicted 15,000 casualties. That's good. And destroyed 11 regiments. Also in Plevna. So it looks like they got to Plevna kind of before we got to Sofia. That main Russian force, I think, is making a beeline for Constanta, the Constanta bottleneck. They want to get back into Russia. They've basically taken the victory locations. They know now, I think, that for any kind of a sustained, <laughs> sustained kind of conflict with us, um, they're going to have to try and get back into Russia. Uh, I mean, that's two fairly significant battles, one hands down. Okay, I'm in a good round, whatever way you cut it. Well, save for the loss of Sarajevo. <laughs> we'll see what the national morale looks like um, and what we got out of those battles. Um, some battles you can look at and think that they're really, really colossal in terms of the outcome. And then you look at national morale and it's fairly slight. 
generally speaking, bigger battles, bigger victories, you do get a, a, a bigger national morale gain from it. Uh, but sometimes you, you win a victory and you think, what? I only get one national morale point. And then other times you, you have a, a battle where it doesn't look like it's that remarkable in some ways. And it's like three or four national morale points. And I guess it, it's just use a kind of public perception. Well, the Russians failed in their attempt anyway to kind of um, break north. But we didn't get to move into Sofia. It looks like they disrupted our move. We fought all the fighting around Plevna. Okay, let's have a look. One from okay, that's fine. That's, that's quite decent. So there's some other kind of battles. Okay, so we don't actually lose anything with Sarajevo. That's interesting. I thought Sarajevo being a kind of um, a victory location would be more significant. It's not in supply. It doesn't have a depot. Maybe that kind of informs a little bit um, what the result is there. Let's see. So first player now, um, not great. Second one, yeah, is one national morale point gained. Let's have a quick look at that. How so? We're at 93, Russia's at 93. Okay, that evens things out. Uh, Salim Pasha arrived then. Uh, let's give him the independent cavalry um, division that gives us a full staff command. Intelligence has gotten poorer. One thing that affects intelligence, incidentally, is the loyalty of the region. So, for example, here, loyalty for Turks is like 10%, 90% Bulgarians and so on. So low levels of loyalty does affect the, the amount of intelligence we get. Um, Duke of Cambridge has moved into Constantinople then. Um, yeah. I mean the British have a reasonable force now kind of located at the centre here. They're not doing much with it. The French have left. Okay, the French have moved to Salonika, if that's the same French force. Okay, on balance not too bad in the West I would say. Um, we're getting supplies into Plevna now. Um, how far is he's two days away? Yeah, so we could actually um, he's activated because of course he's activated. Yeah, we'll do that. I think two days away. Fleet is still sorting. It's out over the east. Okay, Sivas taken back. A bit of Vashi Bazooks into the town, perhaps. And they will gradually uh, re re sort of restore uh, military control over the region. Okay, so once again, Vorontsov has gone AWOL. Where is he? <laughs> He's pulled back from the van. Uh, surprisingly, Krasnov's force is still there. Um, how did it take? Hmm. Okay, well, let's get, um, let's get Hussein Avni embarked anyway. Yeah, it'll take three days. That's good. And Ritsu will be there in 14. There we go. So it's still faster. And we had to uh, wait for those heavy transports to come from Constantinople. So, yeah, good stuff. There's another force there. I think it's a British fleet. Yeah, there's an additional fleet there. It's not ours. It's a British fleet. It's in or perhaps French. No developments, I think. We'll keep this force set to evade combat and try and just recover its organizations ever so slightly. It's only a small brigade in the kind of uh, in the hinterland. What have we got over here? It's a division. Hmm. A 
Okay, let's set this force then to uh, attack. And we'll attack at all costs. And the idea is to try and restore Hodaida to ourselves. I think if this doesn't come off, we're going to have to just basically abandon the fallback. Um, we'll set to hold out at all costs. Yeah, decent turn. I mean, in, in, uh, we've lost kind of Sarajevo, but the problem is it, it, it's we've got to be really careful of keep losing locations and saying, ah, well, you know, we'll win that back. We'll take that back tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it just never happens. And we're passionate, congratulated. Abdul Karim Nandir, congratulated. Yeah, congratulations all around. And we've got Salim Pasha in theatre now. He's got a. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Manufactured goods is looking good. Excellent. Yeah, not a bad round economically. I mean, we're still we're still accumulating capital, even though uh, we're putting some kind of strains on it uh, through kind of imports. So not just the imports, we're paying a premium rate for imports. Um, Okay, a fairly solid round. Uh, in in a strange sort of way, Omar Pasha's move was sort of wasted, but you know, um, also not because he's made some headway towards Sofia. He's only two days away now, um, and is going to be engaging in yeah a battle at Sofia um, against the Russian force, which has been defeated. Um, it no longer has um, significant command penalty, however, and it looks somewhat reduced. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's no evidence of any Russian forces here. That said, uh, military control in Constanta six, sits at 83%. There's a chance there might be a small force there, but um, I don't think any Russian forces got through. Um, I mean, maybe a brigade or something did, something very, very small. If it was a significant force, my thinking is it would probably control this region entirely. Or it may have just passed through, maybe in Bassarabia or Odessa. Um, it looks like... Yeah, we took quite a lot of prisoners um, in the second um, the second engagement of Plevin in that round. I mean, 15,000 casualties plus 11,000 prisoners uh, plus 20,000 casualties. So that's what, 40, 50, 60,000 casualties, something like that altogether, is it? Uh, if you include the prisoners. Yeah, solid round of combat. Okay, I think I'll leave it there. Um... Yeah, again, I mean, uh, looking for kind of uh, sort of quick cathartic kind of solutions to things can sometimes, uh, this game is not well suited to it, you know, uh, we, w we would really like to have destroyed the Russian army in Sofia, we would like to have Sofia back, it's not happened, um, we've inflicted, a, you know, again, a convincing defeat in the field, and I think that's going to be the path, really, that's going to be the path to taking um, Sofia back, to taking Sarajevo back. And ultimately to kind of clearing the Russians from the Balkans. It's not going to be sitting in places like Constanta. It's going to be kind of taking the fight to them. Omar Pasha is going to be doing that again. Um, his organization isn't so low that he's not in a position to do that. He suffered some casualties, um, but certainly far less uh, than the enemy. Um, 10,000 plus 7,000. I mean, yeah, let's say 20,000. That's okay. He's still good to move. Yeah, a solid round. I'm fairly happy with that, you know. Um, and it's by the time of year, weather's still relatively good, actually. Surprisingly, early November, uh, nothing too crazy, no blizzards. I suppose you don't wouldn't really have blizzards in early November, but um, yeah, so far so good. No heavy rainfall. 
I mean, weather is a little bit variable, even within seasons. You can have rainfall sometimes in summer, and this sort of thing. So nothing yet, but it, it may very well turn very, very quickly. Uh, the plan for next turn, I think, is... Um, well, I, I think what I'll do next is I'll, I'll load up in a, early November. Um, I'll set the economic administration uh, to ensure that everything is kind of prepared for exports and, and so on and so forth. And then we'll uh, we'll look at Omar Pasha's next move, uh, which I think will be the Battle of Sofia. So, um, yeah. See you again in early November in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.